All right, hello and welcome. Today we are going to do chapter 10 in your book. Um, the last couple chapters we were talking about the brokerage as a business. And then yesterday, or last class, we spoke about the agency relationship between the client and myself. Now today, nobody really asked how we actually create that agency. If you recall, remember there's a relationship between the client or the principal or the seller and the agent. That agency relationship between the two has to be created and that's what we're gonna talk about the documentation today on how we're actually creating that agency, all right? So the first thing you need to understand is the agency relationship is created between whom? Remember, me and the client. And it's created as an employment contract. Now, it is not a real estate contract. It's an employment contract that employs the client and myself. And in that contract, it explains a bunch of different stuff on how I have to act and how I am going to treat them. One of the things we talked about, which we're gonna do a little bit more today, is the calculation of the commission and how I get paid. But first, I wanna show you something else. So, when, remember that we are going to get employed by a client. And one of the two ways is we either do that through a listing contract with the seller, or we also have a buyer's agency contract with the buyer. So one of these two contracts is what is going to employ us, all right? So in your book, they talk about three ways, and we're gonna deal with uh, this right here, this listing side. There are actually three ways or three different types of contracts that we can use and deal with. The first one is called the exclusive right to sell. The exclusive right to sell gives me, as the listing agent, the exclusive right to list the property for sale. All right, now the key words that I write in here usually is, and how you can tell it's exclusive is, I get paid no matter what. Remember we talked about the procuring cause and I told you that I have to be the procuring cause. Well, here's how the state sees this concept. The state sees it like this. I literally walked up to somebody, knocked on the door and said, hey, today, you're going to sell your house. And they went, okay. So I became the procuring cause under this exclusive right to sell. I am the exclusive agent that gets the right to sell the property. Because of that, I get or earn my commission no matter what. I could be golfing in Hawaii and my assistant call me and go, hey, we got an offer on your listing. Sweet, because I get paid no matter what. I was the procuring cause. I got them to sign that listing agreement, okay? So that's the first contract. Matter of fact, it is probably 99.5% of all the contracts you will ever list. The other two we're gonna talk about here, we don't even really have a form for it. You actually have to take this form and manipulate it or alter it to even get one of the other two forms, all right? So let's look at the second one. Why does it always ask me that? The second one here is called the exclusive agency, all right? Now, the exclusive agency is not the preferred method for you guys to actually try and get them to sell, okay? 
Now, what the exclusive agency says is there must be agency involved for me to earn my commission. So here's my shorthand. I get paid no matter what, except if the seller himself finds the buyer. All right? Except if the seller himself finds the buyer. So what this is saying is this. I've got an agent, or I've got a client that signs a listing. He signs the exclusive agency. If I bring the buyer, I get paid. If one of you guys, as an agent, bring the buyer, I get paid. If the seller finds the buyer, I do not get paid. So imagine the seller standing on the driveway, sweeping the driveway, and a jogger goes by and goes, hey, is your house for sale? And the seller says, yeah, you want to buy it? And the buyer says, yeah, I'll buy it. I would not get paid in that scenario because I, nor you, who have agency, brought a client. So I get paid no matter what, except if the seller finds the buyer himself. This is not your preferred method. This is probably most often used in what we would call, you guys know what a for sale by owner is, right? There's a seller who wants to sell his house. And one of the typical things that most brokers teach you as a beginning agent is to go out and try and find these for sale by owners because they are what we call a warm lead. A warm lead means they are wanting to sell their house, they're just not using you to do it. So you go out and you go, hey, I want you to sign this exclusive right to sell. And they're like, nah, I've been selling bicycles all my life, I really don't need your help. So as a last ditch effort, you might suggest this type of listing. You would say, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Let's play a game. How about I list your house, and if I bring a buyer, you pay me, and if you bring the buyer, you don't pay me. And the guy's like, okay, I'll do that. That is exclusive agency. That is probably the most common time you would use it as a last ditch effort to try and get you a listing. All right, thumbs up. Now, there's one other one, the last one here on this uh, page, on this side, is called open agency. Now, open agency is a very rare animal. I've only seen it used probably twice in my career. And what it says is this, either I, whoever brings the buyer gets the listing. So you get all of the commission or you get none of the commission. Now here's the key with open agency. Open agency can be entered into as many different brokerages as the seller wants to. He literally could sign an open agency with Keller Williams, with Tucker, with the Modulin Group. So in his front yard, he's got six signs. The Modulin Group, Tucker, Keller Williams, Remax, whatever. Whichever sign the buyer calls, that person gets the buyer and the listing. The other people get nothing, all right? So you end up as a limited agent, meaning I get both sides, or I get nothing. Everybody get what I'm saying? Under an exclusive right to sell, he can only, the seller can only list with one person. That's what exclusive means. Under open, he could sign with nine brokers. Now here's the problem. Most brokers won't do this because there's a reason. I don't want to compete with the other eight of you to try and get the, the sale. 
Plus, in our MLS, you can't even do it. Because once Ross, for instance, lists the property, I try and list it in the MLS, it will say this property is already listed. So only the first person actually can get it into the MLS. So therefore, it's very not, it's not even technically possible for multiple of us to list inside of our MLS system. Okay. So let me ask you guys a question for the day. Why would anybody enter into an open brokerage or an open um, listing? They are used, and I said I've seen them about twice in my career. There is a very unique case when an open listing makes sense. All right, anybody got an idea? Looks like Jeopardy here or Family Squares or whatever. Maybe if you can't figure out who has procuring cause. Procuring cause would be given when that buyer, say the buyer drives by and sees my sign and likes the colors, so they call me. I would actually be the procuring cause for the buyer, and now I get this, the, the listing site as well. Okay. All right. It's a good, good try, but I end up getting procuring cause. Here's the reason that you will see this happen. And I'm going to use the word weird. If a property is sufficiently weird enough that it may pull buyers from everywhere, this is the case. Let me give you an example. Lake Lemon down here in Nashville, around Nashville. There's a cabin on the lake. Where's the buyer sitting at? Probably somewhere in California. Could be in California. Could be in Indianapolis, right? Could be in Bloomington. Could be in Southern Indiana. All of those are different MLS systems. So for the seller to get the maximum exposure, he may enter into a open agency with a person from Indianapolis so that the people in Indy get to see the cabin for sale and enter into an open with a person out of Spencer, Indiana, so that the people down in Southern Indiana get to see the cabin for sale. Um, another good example would be, remember when Conseco's house went for sale? It was $25 million. Where's that $25 million buyer sitting at? California, Chicago, Cincinnati, Louisville. All of those are different MLSs. So this would allow the seller to say, okay, I'll tell you what, Raymond, I'll give you the open listing in the MyBor area, and I'm going to give Ivy the listing in the Bloomington because those are different MLS systems. And I want people in Bloomington and Indy to see the property for sale. So occasionally, a property is sufficiently unique enough that it could potentially draw buyers from a number of places that would, it in fact, benefit the seller to enter into an open and buyer and the agents would probably bite off on it. Look, I know I'm getting all the MyBor area. If somebody else comes from Spencer, I'm willing to take that chance. All right?